Hey, nice to meet you. I'm Ben, short for Benfodiamine. Benfodiamine is this interesting sort of synthetically altered form of vitamin B1, thiamine. But it's being used in some really interesting applications. In this case, we're seeing a lot of applications with uh, diabetic patients, but I want to make it very clear on this video. I am not a doctor, and what I am parlaying over to you is not necessarily to be used if you're diabetic. I want to get this information out because I think it might help normally healthy individuals with their carbohydrate metabolism. And also maybe if, you know, higher levels of glucose, maybe this is some interesting research to look into. I'm just some guy on the internet, so very full disclaimer there. This is not medical advice. This is parlaying research over to you so you can learn. But it's fascinating stuff. So right now there's like four different types of vitamin B1 that are out there. We're gonna focus on one that's called benfodiamine because it seems to have the most interesting research in relationship to hyperglycemia, high levels of glucose. Now, if you are someone that maybe is doing a lower carb protocol and now you're starting to eat more carbohydrates, it might take a while for your body to adjust to those carbohydrates. So some of the stuff that I'm gonna to drop today might be very, very useful for you if you're reintroducing carbohydrates or maybe you're just finding that, I don't know, like you don't respond really well to carbs. So let's dive in. After today's video, I want you to check out Natural Heaven. They are a sponsor on this channel, but get this. Okay, they have a mashed potato alternative that's made from hearts of palm. Okay, it is amazing. They have brown rice and white rice versions of hearts of palm. Then they have hearts of palm pasta. Okay, so we're talking like just a few grams of net carbs in like an alternative for mashed potatoes. I will tell you, this is the honest truth. I don't work with a lot of different brands. I work with a very few amount of brands on my channel. Okay, this absolutely has the Thomas stamp on it. This stuff is super cool, even if you're not doing low carb, just to be able to have a higher fiber alternative that really has like less overall caloric and carb impact on your body, you've gotta try them out. So there is a special link down below to save a few bucks if you wanna try Natural Heaven Mash, Natural Heaven Rice, brown rice, white rice, or Natural Heaven Pasta, angel hair, spaghetti, you name it. So those links are down below in the description. So thiamine is vitamin B1. Now we know from a lot of other research that vitamin B1 and B vitamins in general are involved in energy metabolism and a lot of carbohydrate metabolism. Okay, the problem that we face with vitamin B1 is it's water soluble. And if you've ever taken a B vitamin, you know that well, when you go to the bathroom afterwards, a lot of times it's kind of like neon yellow because it's just not getting utilized, right? Water-soluble B vitamins are difficult because they are dependent upon a transporter and those transporters have a slow sort of rate, right? Slow, so that you take some vitamin B and then the transporters pick it up and what doesn't get picked up ends up just getting excreted. So you're dependent on the transporters. Now our cell membranes are made up of lipids. It's a phospholipid bilayer, phospholipid like membranes. So that means in order for vitamin B1 to really get into that membrane outside of a transporter, it would need to be altered to be basically not water soluble, it needs to be more fat soluble. So there's a few different versions that they have. Okay, there's fersultiamine, which has some interesting evidence. There's solbutiamine, which has some interesting evidence as well, which has to do with like um, being able to cross through the blood brain barrier, be active in the brain when it comes down to interesting forms of muscle weakness. Anyway, I'm not gonna touch on that too much because that's not the focus. Then there's one called benfodiamine. Benfodiamine is also synthetically altered to be fat soluble, but the evidence is really interesting. And most of the evidence, full disclaimer, is in diabetic patients. This does not mean that it is to be construed as a like, diabetic treatment or anything like that. What it's typically used for is to prevent the progression of some of the additional side effects of high glucose. Okay, so side of the side effects like vascular damage, that's one of the biggest ones, okay? Like when you have high levels of glucose for a while, it can damage the vascular system. What happens is when glucose gets concerted into the, uh, what are called endothelial cells, it ends up creating these metabolites, okay? And these metabolites activate these different pathways like the hexosamine pathway, they activate the advanced glycation end product pathway, what these ultimately do is they damage the vascular system. They are essentially bad metabolites. We don't want a lot of them. They are a response to high glucose acting upon the endothelial cells. Well, there's a study that was published in the journal Nature Medicine that found that benfodiamine activated something called transketolase. Now what transketolase would do is it takes these bad metabolites and basically tames them down into not as bad metabolites. So the glucose is still there. You're not solving that problem, but it might be slowing the progression of the vascular damage that can occur 
from that. Again, this is the research talking, not Thomas DeLauer, just FYI. Another way that it could be helping is it could be blocking what is called the hyperglycemic induced nuclear factor kappa B activation. Nuclear factor kappa B is the inflammatory regulator. It's the master switch for inflammation within the body. When nuclear factor kappa B is turned on, it turns on like the activation of all kinds of different genes. Okay, so it, it stimulates the production of these pro-inflammatory genes. Now, it's been demonstrated that in people that are diabetic, they can have three times the amount of nuclear factor kappa B activation, significantly more, probably as a result of being higher glycemic. That's why it's called high glycemic induced nuclear factor kappa B activation. So benfodiamine could be playing a role there as well, which is really fascinating by modulating that inflammatory response. But let's get into some more interesting stuff. There was a study published in the journal Neuroscience Letters that demonstrated that benfodiamine could have an effect on reducing sort of the oxidative stress that affects the cerebral neurons. So if we can mitigate some of the cerebral neuron stress, then maybe we can get a handle on some of the longer term side effects that happen as a result of high blood sugar, right? So being able to control that oxidative damage in the brain is very, very important. Like when you're looking at diabetic patients, for example, like the damage of cerebral neurons is really what can lead to that neuropathy and lead to those problems. So again, I'm not saying that this is gonna fix everything, but I do encourage you to start looking at the research. All the research is linked down below too. I put all the links there so you can like make your own decision and look at these things. Okay. Now, additionally, there's some interesting evidence with benfodiamine and uh, blood perfusion. So being able to get a little bit more blood flow, but also increased oxygenation and vasodilation. When we have more blood flow, that could be a promising thing when it comes down to distributing glucose. So even if you're like, you know, a normal healthy individual, getting more circulation and more oxygenation is good because that means more glucose could potentially get delivered to the right area, right? So how does this apply to someone that is normal, that's not diabetic? Well, if you're overeating carbohydrates, then maybe it can control some of the damage that occurs as a result of being hyperglycemic. There's in, even some interesting human trials that are going on right now. Like there is one that was published in the International Journal of Pharmacology Therapeutics took a look at 50 milligrams of benfodiamine given to diabetics and promising results there. So really cool stuff coming down the pipeline with that. But you're a normal healthy individual, okay? Where does this come into play? Like if you go and you eat too much cake, can benfodiamine help mitigate some of the damage with that? I wanna make it very clear. Benfodiamine isn't necessarily designed to help you utilize carbohydrates better. That's not necessarily the role. What we're seeing and what looks kind of promising is that it can mitigate some of the damage that occurs as a result of having high levels of blood sugar. For example, there's a study published in the European Journal of Nutrition. It took a look at a small group of people, okay, and they were glucose intolerant, which means that they had a hard time using glucose. Their bodies just uh, maybe were on the edge of becoming insulin resistant, right? Okay, well, they had a control group and a group that received three 100 milligram servings of regular vitamin B1 in this case, okay, for six weeks. The placebo group had worsened plasma glucose, worsened plasma insulin, and worsened insulin resistance. But the thymine group had less deterioration that occurred as a result of the higher levels of glucose. So even though their conditions were still worsening just like everybody else, when there was the thiamine at play, the sort of side effects and the deterioration that goes along with it was slowed, the progression was slowed. So this can apply if maybe you're doing a low carb diet and you haven't had carbs in a while and your body doesn't know how to deal with the carbohydrates very well because if you don't use it, you lose it. So you have some carbohydrates and your body's like, whoa, I don't know what to do with this and your blood sugar goes high. Well, then maybe you can mitigate some of the damage by utilizing this. Again, this is the research talking, not just me, and it's something to test out with yourself. Either way, very compelling, interesting stuff that I think we all need to start taking a look at. And I think we're starting to see it even in the human trials piece too. So maybe it is getting investigated more. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.